All right, guys, one of the things we're going to do on a more regular basis, uh, hopefully monthly, is uh, a goal we can have for sending these out to you where we can use the power of technology, use video, and send you some information about the market, some updates on what's going on supply and demand-wise, trend-wise, relative strength-wise regarding the market. Um, the beauty of video is that you can sit down and watch it when it works for you. You can pause the video, take a step away. Maybe you want to grab a cup of coffee. You can watch it when you want. Uh, another thing is you can share it with friends. Um, it's also picture-based. You know, pictures are worth a thousand words. And so we can communicate better using a combination of audio and visuals going along with it. So we'll do this on a regular basis and dig into the markets. We'll discover some unique and important concepts as well as um, the plan going forward. So I hope you guys enjoy this. Let's go ahead and dig into what we're finding out going on uh, after this past month. As always, uh, presentations like this are for informational and educational purposes only. Shouldn't be used for using as a basis for investment decisions on your own. There are restrictions for term of use, and you can find those with the link provided below. A live link will be provided in uh, below the video itself. It's listed here on your screen, but then you can also click below the video on YouTube and find that exact link and read through it if you'd like. But the basic premise is you shouldn't be using this video as a purpose or a way to make your investment decisions. Uh, what we're doing is we're going through um, an educational piece and illustrating uh, what's going on in the market and giving you some examples for you to use and get a better understanding. As always, when we're using the adaptive system to guide our thought process and our investment decision-making process, it's going to be based on three things. The most important thing being price. Price is based on supply and demand, economic law. More supply than demand, price goes down. More de demand than supply, price goes up, and we can see this. We can also use this information to identify trends and relative strength. For those of you who've gone through our education process or an initial consultation or do planning with us, you're familiar with this information. If you haven't, um, you should go ahead and come in and check out how this adaptive system works. Uh, but whenever we do these videos on a monthly basis, we're always going to step back and take a look at the big picture as well as, yes, we'll look at what happened during the past month, maybe even the past week. Uh, but we're always going to dial back and take a, make sure we're looking at the big picture and not watching TV or a movie with our nose on the screen. That's very important. A lot of stuff that happens on a weekly and monthly basis is noise in the market. Um, that's not One month does not make a trend. It is a sequence of months and over time. And really, we look at 36-month periods of time, a three-year window, and we get a really good gauge on what's going on in that time frame. And so we're always going to do that when we go through this process. We're going to look at some unique things in the short term, but we're also going to identify where we are in the big picture. So it's always going to involve price, it's always going to involve trend, and it's always going to involve relative strength. So speaking of the big picture and price, here is a chart of the S&P 500. It actually goes back in time uh, to you know the late 1990s. Uh, we could go back further, but for right now, this gives you a good gauge. We use the S&P 500. Some of you are probably familiar with the Dow Jones. Uh, that's one index you can look at that contains 30 of the largest U.S. stocks. S&P 500 is something that we use to look at. Um, it isn't necessarily representative of the whole market, but it did, does give us a good gauge. It's about 500 U.S. stocks that are currently traded we could also use something like the Russell 2000, which is even a bigger representation and probably a little bit more uh, of a bigger picture perspective, understanding what's going on with the market. Because after all, it yes, it's a stock market, but it's also a market of stocks. So here we have the S&P 500 going back to the late 90s up through current date. We can see from a big picture perspective, some of you are familiar with uh, supply and demand taking place during these periods here. You know, this is the dot-com bubble where we saw more supply than demand, and then we saw demand push prices back up, and again, uh, prices fall uh, during the 2008 financial crisis. One of the things you'll hear is that, oh, we're in a very lengthy bull market from here to here, but that 
is uh, definitely uh, up for interpretation as when we look at things and identify uh, are we in a new bull market, uh, we might want to point out the fact that from here to here, we went basically sideways. So the dot-com high is not a coincidence that the 2007 high matched that dot-com high. And it wasn't until 2013 where we broke out. Big picture-wise, uh, this correction here from 2015 into 2016 uh, on the S&P 500 was only about 15%. But man, a lot of things underneath uh, that's why we look at the market as a whole, stock market as a whole. We just don't look at one index. I know the financial media and news sites like to focus on that because it's something easy to do and it can, you know, it's easy to something to communicate on a daily basis. But really, there's a lot more going on than just an index. And we'll get into that in a little bit. But this correction here was much deeper when you looked at different industries and sectors. Um, you know, for example, small caps were down over 20 percent. Energy was down. Uh, over 40% in some in some instances, oil was down uh, dramatically. So this was a, a, a pretty uh, decent correction. It wasn't until uh, late last year that we broke above this level. And so really this bull market's, in, in our view, uh, relatively young. That is contrary to what you'll hear uh, in the financial media. There's many talking about this being an eight-year-old bull market. We disagree. Uh, but everyone's, uh, they're entitled to their opinion, but we think it's a disservice to say that the bull market is that long. But this is the big picture perspective. But as you recall, uh, this is a very, there's a lot of noise here with price. And so how do we identify trends? Let's take a look at that. So now we've overlaid <clears throat> some important information here. <clears throat> and if you've gone through our education process, you're very familiar with this. Uh, if you haven't, again, I encourage you to come in uh, and we can walk you through this and how this works. But basically what we want to do is use price, which is the most important piece of data, to identify trends. So how do we, what does that mean? What does a trend mean? How do we identify that? Well, quite simply, I don't use exactly what the adaptive system is using in this instance. Again, this is for illustrative purposes only and for education. But for simplicity's sake, to give you a conceptual idea of how we identify trend, <clears throat> quite simply here on the screen, this blue line uh, that's very smooth here, that is the prior 40 weeks of information. So at the end of each week on a Friday, we get a new data point for the S&P 500. We also get an average for the prior 40 weeks of information. So it's a smoother trend. It's a long-term trend. 40 weeks of information is the blue line. The orange line, uh, conversely, is a little shorter. It's about 10 weeks of information, and that represents just like I said, the prior 10-week average. And so we can use these to identify and make some rules based on trends. Quite simply, from a big picture perspective, we can use these rules to identify and capture major trends and avoid major drawdowns. Major drawdowns being you know, between 20 and 50%. We want to avoid those, especially when we're near or in retirement. One of those rules, and again, this isn't exactly what we use, but it's a good representation. When orange drops below blue, we simply have a rule, and there's all sorts of research that shows this, that when this scenario takes place, volatility picks up dramatically, and downward price action, more supply than demand takes place. So just simply using this, this rule, uh, we can avoid these drawdowns, we can participate in moves up in the market, and this takes place uh, over and over. We can capture major, major moves and avoid uh, major drawdowns, but then participate again when it makes sense. So that's the big picture in essence. We can use these uh, rules and trends to identify when it's okay to be exposed to, to the market and when it isn't. And currently, uh, even with any of the noise recently, it does make sense to be exposed to equities during this time. So from a from a from a ongoing perspective, really we're just looking is is are the trends up? Or can we be involved with the market? Are higher prices likely or possible, more possible than uh, lower prices? And based on this information, based on orange being above blue or the short term trend being above the long term trend, both sloping upwards, this is a very positive characteristic for the market currently. This scenario here is very similar to the scenarios we've seen in the past where the market is positive. 
and this is regardless of what the financial media communicates, uh, you know, maybe what's going on in Washington, D.C. We don't really make our investment decisions based on that. We use this data here. We use the information in the market, and we apply this to uh, each aspect of the market. And really, when we think about the stock market, it is a market of stocks. Uh, think of it very much like a loaf of bread. Um, there's different ways to slice that bread. And it's not just an index that's moving up or down. It's not just the Dow or the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ. There's pieces within that that make up the whole. And a lot of places, including 401ks, they'll slice the loaf of bread horizontally. So you have your large cap funds, your mid cap funds, your small cap funds, which is fine. We'll use that information. But we also like to slice the market or the loaf of bread traditionally. This is where we're cutting the market into slices that we can compare against each other and draw some type of weight of evidence conclusion from. So it's a very scientific method that we're taking an approach to the market with. You know, for example, there's plenty of stocks in the market that fall within uh, technology. Think of your Googles or your Facebook or Microsoft or Oracle. Those type of firms, stocks would fall into a technology sector. Or maybe utilities, maybe you're familiar with Wisconsin Energy, that would fall into utility category, and we're looking at those types of companies. Or maybe we're looking at United Healthcare or something like that in the healthcare sector. But there's all these different sectors that make up the market, and they're, and they're doing different things at different times, and we need to identify what is the trend. Okay, we talked about trend being uh, a blue line and an orange line, just to, to talk uh, uh, sim simplistically. But we're using those trends and identifying is orange above blue in these different scenarios. And then we're also doing something called relative strength. But we want to we look at the stock market very similar to this, where we're able to look at these different sectors individually, compare it to the whole, and see how is it doing. So here is that <clears throat> loaf of bread. Uh, and in this example, we're using the S&P 500. And uh, previously, one of the charts we were looking at back, it went back to 19, the late 1990s and was a big picture perspective. Here, we're actually looking at the previous uh, six months of information. This is how the market's moved. And, and you can see its stair steps. And we can see that orange is above blue. So this is a healthy environment to be involved with the market. What would an unhealthy market look like or a market that we wouldn't necessarily want to be involved in? Well, remember, it's got to be orange below blue when the trends are down. And what would that look like? <clears throat> well, remember the 2007, 8, 9 financial crisis? We saw those trends change right in here. Well, what did that look like close up? Here's what it looked like. This is a, a same thing. It's six months of information, but here we saw uh, the trends change. We saw orange below blue. And this would have been a period where we would have, wanted, would have wanted to protect assets, which we do, which makes the adaptive system unique to many other firms as we will uh, protect and remove ourselves from the market because we want to avoid these bigger drawdowns like this. We will protect assets during this time. We will use cash as a position. But that's what 2007, 2008 looked like, which is not what today looks like. Today we're seeing orange above blue. It's a healthy environment. Um, and one thing to note here is normal price behavior uh, for the market itself and any asset you look at is it will not go in a straight line. Prices do not move in a straight line. And, and this gets hard to track because if you're looking on uh, a website like Yahoo Finance, there's nothing wrong with that. But you might just be getting percentage changes and it's very hard to gauge where we are in the market. When we can look visually at the math at price and see what's going on, we can see that price moves up and it moves down and it moves up and it moves down. And it's this that gives us trends. This is called price discovery. Okay, we're trying to find where are the buyers and where are the sellers and price moves in this way. And so from a high to a low, you might have a minus 3% and then plus 3% and minus 2% and plus 4% and minus 2%. But it's these moves down, whether it's your account or uh, which, which is correlated to going to be somewhat correlated to market. These types of moves 
will uh, make investors nervous, right? It, that the market's very good at making investors nervous when we have these what are called drawdowns of you know two to five to sometimes eight percent, which is completely normal behavior within an uptrend. Now, if that type of behavior starts taking place when orange is below blue, that's something quite different. But we're in a positive trend. Orange is above blue. Here we have normal price behavior. And that's why we're doing these videos, so we can point out that these type of moves, which can take months at a time, go from a high to a low of minus 3%, or even for the past almost month, when we look at June, it was actually almost close to down for June. That's normal price behavior. We'll, we're still in a positive trend for the overall market, and that's important. We want to see that type of information uh, to understand the market and the big picture. So let's take a a look at a couple of those slices of bread that we talked about before. For example, here's an, uh, here's technology and what this looks like. And note, again, orange is above blue. This is healthy uh, price behavior. Uh, yes, you will see that sometimes we've got price that makes a move from a high to a low, and that's a 5% move down. And that, that type of move uh, will make people nervous, but it's definitely uh, within normal price behavior within a positive trend. You know, when we look at markets, we can identify where we're seeing buyers and sellers. So when we look at the market over the past month, we can identify, well, obviously, it, it, you know, we're having buyers and shells, buyers show up at these important levels. And they continue to show up at these levels and support and that's how supply and demand works. Buyers, 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 and that's completely normal. That's what we want to see. Now, if price were to break below here, that would be one warning sign, and another one would be if orange was below blue. But right now, even with a 5% correction, we continue to see a positive trend. We continue to see buyers in control, because otherwise, how else would price move up other than there being demand? So there's demand for equities right now, and we continue to see that for technology. So another important aspect of the adaptive system is something called relative strength. So the previous chart I showed you was technology in a positive trend, orange above blue, making a series of higher highs and higher lows, and even with um, corrections taking place. So one of the things we also do is we look at each slice of bread and we compare one against the other and come up with a ratio. So in it, this chart is technology divided by the price of the S&P 500. And what this does is it gives us a ratio. And quite simply, when the ratio is rising, that particular slice of bread or sector is outperforming the S&P 500. So of course, those are the things uh, if we're if we're using the S&P 500 or something like it as our gauge, that's something we'd want to know, and that's something we'd want to own. And in this case, when this ratio rises, technology is outperforming the S&P 500. And in this instance, orange is above blue, so the trend of technology outperforming the S&P 500 is still intact, even with a move from here to here, which during this period, basically from June through the end of, so almost the month of June, technology has underperformed the S&P 500. But that doesn't mean it's not something worth owning because we can see it is in a series of uh, higher highs and higher lows, and it's normal price behavior to retest levels pr uh, previously recorded where there were sellers. But the main thing is the trend remains up with this ratio. So the trend of technology outperforming the S&P 500 is intact, orange is above blue, so it's something that can be owned. And so technology, which is over 20% of the S&P 500 itself, which is the biggest piece of the S&P 500, so if you think about, again, that loaf of bread, if it was the S&P 500, technology is the biggest slice of bread. And so really from an overall market perspective, you want technology to lead. Another uh, interesting sector to look at or slice of bread to look at is internet. Uh, that's another slice of bread. And we want to look at that and identify, is that in a positive trend? And we, again, we see orange above blue. 
that's something in a positive trend and something that we can be involved in. Uh, yes, it's, it's moved down in price over a month, but it's still within this positive trend and worth owning. I'm not gonna cover every single uh, slice of bread because we're already uh, running longer than I wanted to for this, uh, for this video, but another example is here is financials. Uh, you can see this one's a little bit more volatile, but we continue to see orange above blue. We continue to see that trend up. Um, yes, we have from basically from March 1st all the way through the beginning of June, this was a, a large drawdown for the sector, and that's perfectly normal price behavior. And um, but we're continuing to see that it's in a positive trend, and that's a, that's a good thing. So our financial sector continues to be in a positive trend. An example of a sector or a slice of bread that that um, really there's no business owning is energy. Uh, we continue to see oil struggle, uh, and 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 this this price chart for energy sector um, completely uh, is a classic example of a downtrend. We continue to see uh, lower prices over and over, a low, a lower low, another lower low, and the highs cannot exceed previous highs. That's classic discounting price behavior where there's more sellers than buyers or more selling urgency than buying urgency. Orange is below blue. And so currently, at this point, energy doesn't necessarily make sense to own. This can always change. And if the data changes, this could be a sector or a slice of bread that is worth looking at. But if energy is in your portfolio, uh, really it shouldn't be. It doesn't make sense uh, with a downtrend like this uh, taking place. This can always change and reverse back up. From a, but from a, even from a big picture perspective, we're seeing the trend is down. And right now the sector is hands off. Going a little bit uh, in, a, in, a, in a different direction than this, something that's based in the United States, you know, it being 2017, we have so much more access to investment vehicles that give us access to investments overseas than we ever did in the past. And we should, so we should take advantage of that. And so we go through the process of looking internationally and, and seeing where are the positive trends, where is the relative strength. And right now, one of those things that we're seeing is emerging markets and emerging markets uh, for a while. And it's, it's something that we'll hold in a portfolio for our clients. Uh, it, it's in a positive trend. Orange is above blue. Um, and it, again, it's not in a straight line. And really from May, you could make an argument from May, it's really not gone anywhere. So for almost two months, this position has not really gone anywhere, but that's normal behavior. This, this happens over and over where price discounts or moves sideways and then it moves higher. But as long as we're making a series of higher highs, okay, we continue to see higher highs and our lows where buyers are stepping in and buying continue to be higher, okay, you can notice that we are in this positive trend and emerging markets is something, a space you could be in. Now, maybe um, a clue that we'd want to look at to see whether buyers are or buyers are actually serious is a level like this. Okay, something in this area where price has held above, it were price were to break below that, that would be step one warning. And then we'd wanna be looking at is orange above blue. But right now, uh, emerging markets con continues to what's called consolidate. Price will move sideways within this range. Now, it's not, um, it's not unhealthy for this to happen. This is actually healthy behavior for the market. And when we compare this, when we do that relative strength analysis against, for example, the S&P 500, this very similar uh, scenario takes shape where orange is above blue. So from a bigger picture perspective, we continue to see emerging markets outperform the United States. I've already gone too long, so I'll only cover one more. Here's Europe. I just wanted to cover this real quickly. We continue to see orange above blue for Europe. When we do the analysis versus the United States, same scenario, orange above blue. Now, it's not in a straight line. We are going to see areas where the market moves sideways. This is very similar to what's going on with emerging markets. We see this consolidation here, but we continue to see a series of higher highs and higher lows, which is the very definition of an uptrend. So 
we continue to see that this is normal price behavior. So this high is higher than this one, and this low is higher than this one. The trend remains up, so it, it, it makes sense to own it based on the data. Uh, price doesn't lie. We continue to see the trend be up in Europe, and we continue to see it that way against the United States. That can always change. It could change tomorrow. Uh, you know, it could change next week. A real good clue would be if, if buyers couldn't hold a level, a level like this where buyers have shown up in the past. Uh, but in the end, we continue to see the trend up there as well. So as I promised, we'll always come back to the big picture. We'll always look at uh, where we are at trend, where is the, you know, what's the market doing, uh, what kind of information is it providing. And right now, we continue to see the trend heading upwards. And even when we have some noise going on, really from, from here, we've gone a bit sideways. Uh, you know, for June, the market's kind of gone a little bit sideways, but that's perfectly normal behavior within an uptrend. You'll even have periods when orange is above blue where you'll have a move like this. That could be 5 to 8%, and that's perfectly normal. But right now, the data continues to show that we're in an uptrend, uh, you know, similar to a situation like this, which we want to, you know, this makes more sense to be involved in than when the data shows a downtrend and not wanting to be involved in the market. So we continue to see buyers stepping in and buying equities. That's a, that's a healthy characteristic, um, regardless of what's going on in Washington, D.C., regardless of what's going on overseas. We continue to see risk appetite, which is uh, normal buying behavior. And when it changes, will change. Again, if we're in a scenario where we see the trends change and the relative strength of any sector change, will change. We're going to continue focusing on the slices of bread, as well as the loaf itself. Again, the market is not just an index. It's not just uh, the Dow Jones or the S&P 500 or the Russell 2000 or the NASDAQ. It's individual pieces, too, and we're going to continue to monitor those strong pieces like technology or Internet, financials picking up, healthcare picking up. But really, we don't want to own those slices that are in a downtrend, energy or real estate. Those are things uh, that we want to stay, stay away from. We want to make sure we're owning the healthy pieces, even if for a month or two they're underperforming the market. As long as they're in a positive trend, the data shows they're worth owning during a 36-month or, you know, during a period of time that's longer than just a month or two months. So that concludes the video. Uh, it went a little bit longer than I wanted, but this is something I want to try doing on a, on a basis going forward for you guys. Um, this way it gives you a big picture perspective on, on what's going on. I hope you found this information useful. As always, it's for informational and educational purposes only. You can go ahead and check us out online at clientfirsttaxandwealth.com. But again, thank you for the time. Feel free to reach out to me with any questions you have. Hopefully you found this useful, and we'll do this again in a month.